Welcome YouTube and welcome back to all my Buster Buddies. It's your big kahuna here, Brad, and this is Brad's Board and Busters, your textile art channel. This is the channel where we have fun with fabric. And on this episode, well, as I promised in the last video, we are going to be doing the 18-point honeycomb mandala. And so I think I finally figured out this tie. I will show it as detailed as possible. But also, if you'd like to see another detailed video of that, go to Raya's tie-dye channel. Uh, she does a very good video on tying up the honeycomb as well. So, what you're going to need for this project is a 100% cotton t-shirt, white, uh, pre-washed first, and then soaked in soda ash solution for at least 20 minutes then put back in the washer and spun out so it's just slightly damp and I've done all that so my shirt's here at the table ready to go. The other thing you're going to need for this project is sinew to tie up the honeycomb mandala and then for the fabric that's left over in the back we're just going to scrunch that up today and so I'm going to use rubber bands but you could use kite string as well. Anyway, I've got all that ready, so let's head over to the work table and get it tied up. Okay, Busters, so my shirt's all prepped here. It's just slightly damp. Um, a couple other items that we're going to need for this project I forgot to mention earlier. I said sinew and, uh, and rubber bands for tying it up. Uh, you'll need a washable marker for marking out this pattern. Uh, also, a protractor to lay it out. And then a straight edge ruler will help. And for creating the pleats, um, I used kind of a blunt nose tweezer that would help also, or some sort of pleating tool as well. So that's what you're gonna need for this project. All right, so the first thing we do is center the shirt. Then you're going to want to pull the front of the shirt forward. And then pull the bottom sleeve into the top sleeve. That way when you dye it, the sleeves will be symmetrical. And it just kind of creates a neater um, situation when you're folding things up that way you don't have both sleeves just kind of out on their own i like to pull them through each other for most of my projects all right and just straighten out the shirt get the wrinkles out from underneath Good for me. All right, determine where you want the center of your mandala. I think we're gonna go about there. All right, so now we need the protractor. So we are going to use this as our pivot point and we're gonna lay out on the protractor every 20 degrees. thing to do which kind of helps you keep your pleats uh, in alignment with each other run around the outside of your protractor here make a line and you'll see as we're folding this up it'll be like any other pattern you want to line up that uh, crescent shape so it's kind of a straight line when you're finished 
Then the next step is take your ruler and draw out these 20 degree marks. Line them up to the center pivot point. Okay, that's all marked off. So that's all we'll need the marker for. Okay, one other item that I need um, that comes in really handy when after you start folding it is some little binding clips. Let me grab those. Yeah, I like to use these little binding clips. Um, when you get maybe two or three of these uh, pleats uh, put together, then I like to clamp them together, hold them in place as I'm going along. So those I find pretty, pretty useful. Okay, so to start this fold, you take this folded edge, it comes up to the first line. And then basically you want to, uh, these lined marks that you did, those are going to be the tops of the pleats. And then in between will be kind of the valleys of the pleats. So this point here now will come to this point. And this is where, like I said, the, uh, this radius line comes in handy. As you can kind of have gives you a good visual of how to keep it straight. Okay, so it's at this point that I usually will start using the binding clips. So I've got three of these plus this first one. And if I can open it wide enough, I will grab all of those. If not, yeah, I can. There you go. So hold that in place. put two, one down toward the bottom, and then one up here at the top. And then you can just keep going. Okay, so I've got two more folds there, and then I take more clips and grab one that I was already bound and then incorporate the new the two new ones. Keep going. But you can see here how doing this radius line is helping us keep everything straight. Because you want this to finish off as straight as a, as straight a line as you can make it. And also be mindful of wrinkles in between the folds. 
it's a little challenging this there's a lot kind of going on with this particular pattern and fold Okay, and then the last one is the center fold where we centered our shirt and just in the same way that we started that gets folded into this pleat and then you're done with the folding. Okay, so now what we want to do is clean this up here. That's what I said the tweezers will come in handy for. And kind of organize the pleats down at the bottom. And what I suggest after you get this part of it kind of where you want it is is to take maybe a, one of your smaller rubber bands and just kind of bind this area off to hold it in place. Hopefully I'm not blocking the camera too much, but I have to get in here tight to straighten things out. So I use these little, I think they're like little ponytail rubber bands, a little, you know, for tying back your hair. They work pretty well for this. And if you can double it up. Okay. That kind of holds that in position. All right, there we go. So there's our pleats, fairly well organized, I think. All right, so now we're ready to start tying. I want to show you something first so you kind of understand how this tie happens. So bear with me, I'll be right back. Okay, Busters, um, I got, I drew a diagram here for you and I'll zoom in on it. So hopefully you can see this and it makes it plain enough to understand. All right, and let me get the shirt in here so we can kind of use it also as reference. Okay, so we're going to tie off the end here with sinew and it'll just be a little circle like this and that's kind of represented here what you want to do then is come up diagonally from the bottom and typically this wrap what you're supposed to do is come up the side and then straight across the top and then diagonally down the other side. So it would be up here, straight across, down over here, across the bottom, and then back to the same point and back over diagonally again. But what I have found is in the beginning where everything is very narrow and small and shallow and and when you pull your sinew 
this gets very compact and tight that the easiest thing to do because there's not enough fabric to go straight across is to just do a crisscross of your sinew in the center on the top and the bottom as you're working your way down. As you work your way down then eventually you'll have enough fabric and meat where you can come straight across and then diagonally and straight across the bottom. But in the beginning that's really almost impossible to do. So anyway, I hope this kind of shows you a little bit of what we're going to be doing. And like I say, I will go slow and try and make this as plain as possible because I know this is the, well, the fold I was able to get. It was just the proper tie up. This took me a while to, to learn and figure out. So uh, like I say, watch me and hopefully it becomes obvious enough or plain enough that you can recreate it yourself. All right, let's get going on it. Okay. Okay, so like I say, my first pull is diagonally. Hold it with your finger, come across. And then just pull it slightly tight just to kind of hold it in place. And hold it with your other finger. Go down diagonally over here. Across the bottom, pull that just to lock it in, and then back over. Like I say, because it compresses, so it's, you can just do a, like a cross, an X on that top part, and then you'll kind of match or meet up to where you first tied off your sinew. And you can actually run, run around that one more time. And then just pull that to help lock that up. And then just repeat over those initial sinew pulls. Lock it in again. And then, so you've gone around twice on, on all that. So now what you do is you just kind of double back and leave it there. And then you can start your next, um, well, it, you get a pair of what I call nodes or, you know, little knots. So now you can start your next pair. So we're underneath here again. So now you'll pull up diagonally and then come across the top and then diagonally down the other side across the bottom again come back over And then come back underneath your first poles there. Or come back, yeah, on the bottom you come back to where you finished your first pair of knots. And then you can pull that to lock that in. All right, so you've gone around and you ended up back kind of where you started. And so you can snug that up. So, I mean, if you 
turn and go back it could slip a little bit so to keep a nice kind of tight uh, point right there I like to go across this one more time like I did before and just work your way around you don't have to really snug it up there I mean you can give it a little tug just so it's not loose but then that way you're heading in the right direction to go back over the sinew lines once again and so that's that so you have nice little knots there and so then you can come back tighten that up and then we'll just keep repeating this process on down the line you can start pulling some of these binding clips off and possibly this next go around we can actually go straight across like typically it's supposed to be done so let's see if we have enough fabric here to accomplish that Okay, pretty good. All right, so this is kind of how you're supposed to see it. So see I'm diagonally both ways there, straight across on the top, also fairly straight on the bottom. Okay, that's about how that's supposed to work out. So now let's just keep repeating this process until we get up here as far as we want to go. Um, you know, we're going to run into the sleeves and the collar. So you determine how large you want this. Um, I will decide kind of where I want to stop when I feel it's probably appropriate. All right, I'll keep tying this. Enjoy the music.
Okay, busters. So hopefully you can see here, see we're starting to get wide enough and thick enough here where you can actually get the sinew to come straight across the, uh, you know, the, uh, well, the fold of the shirt, your pleats. Like I say, when you're down here at the beginning, it's too small. So it's just a little crisscross is good enough. But yeah, when you get up here where it's thicker, then you can actually, you know, do the way it's supposed to be, um, where it has the sinew going straight across the top and the bottom. All right, I'm almost finished. A few more, and then we will call it good. Okay, I am done. So that is our honeycomb mandala fold or tie off. And like I say, it's, uh, it's a challenging one. Yeah, it may take you a few times to get it right. And even I still sometimes am happy with my results and other times not. The other thing, and I've seen other YouTubers say this. I have never had luck doing it. So my shirt is straight out of the washer after I had spun it. And so it's just slightly damp. I've heard others where they fold it up like this and then let it dry. Or the shirt is bone dry before they fold it up. I've tried multiple methods and the issue I have and I know if you take uh, some soda ash solution and spray it on the shirt helps break the surface tension so it uh, the shirt absorbs the dye easier um, for me it's like I prefer to have it slightly damp because one then I don't have issues with the dye not absorbing into the fabric and if I'm careful and slow enough about how you apply the dye then you're not going to get too much bleed over from one section to another so anyway like I say when you do this you can try multiple methods see what works best for you okay busters so I always want to be honest with you and you know Truth in advertising and all that good stuff. Um, I was looking at it after I got done tying it up and there were a few of my sinew lines that I didn't think were quite tight enough. So I actually unwrapped it and then retied it, but I didn't do anything different than what you'd already seen me do. I just wanted to make sure I had cinched down the sinew better. That way when I dye it, um, all the individual colors stay separate, you know, as much, much as possible. And so that way you get a more defined uh, honeycomb pattern. So anyway, so it's all tied up though, ready for dye. Um, just need to scrunch up my back here and then we're ready to put dye on it. So let me get this finished off and we'll get into the dye. Okay, that's it. So uh, let me get set up for the dye and we'll get on with that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Buster, so here we are. We're all set up to dye the 18 point honeycomb mandala. Um, going to be using lots of colors on this, so let me run through them really quick. Uh, I'm not going to be able to really show them or anything, but let me just tell you what I'm going to be uh, using to apply because, like I say, I'm doing a whole rainbow of colors on this. So I'll be using Chinese red, dragon fruit, soft orange, bright yellow, lime pop, bright green, new emerald green, uh, amethyst, uh, robin's egg blue, turquoise, sapphire blue, deep purple, and lilac. And um, I might apply those on the mandala in that order, or and then some of them obviously I'll use on the body. So enjoy the music and you're gonna watch along. Oh, the other thing I was gonna to mention to y'all is I've recently been using these needle point uh, or needle tip uh, dye bottles. I got them off of Amazon. I used to use this type of bottle, but you get so much more control over these. I will put a link uh, in the description to where I got these from. Uh, came in, I believe a 10 pack. Um, yeah, it really makes a difference, especially getting in here because you can actually stick the needle kind of down in between these pleats and it helps to penetrate the center of these little knots. So anyway, I'm going to be using these for at least the mandala part. I'll probably use the bottles on the body. All right, here we go.
Okay, Busters, so that's all the dye on our shirt. And so now it'll go in my curing tub for 24 hours. And after it's cured, then I'll take it out to the garage to the laundry sink. And we'll rinse it out. We'll start with cold water to get the excess soda ash out. And then we'll turn it up to hot to flush out any dye that hasn't bonded with the shirt as yet. After it's all rinsed out and the water's running clear, it'll go in the laundry with detergent and Curalon, which is a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. And so then it'll be washed in a hot water cycle. And after it's washed and dried, we'll bring it back to the table and we'll do our reveal. So I will see you at the reveal. Okay, Buster Buddies, so here is our honeycomb mandala. Yeah, it came out pretty good. Uh, got a couple areas here where we didn't get dye in all the way. And if you can imagine, this folded in half and then, you know, fan folded. This would have been right in the middle. And so, you know, I was always concerned of oversaturating and bleeding one color into another. And on the red here, I could have applied certainly more dye. And you saw me squeezing the, uh, you know, those little knots uh, where the individual color gets uh, put in. And that's to, it serves two purposes. Uh, it helps distribute actually the dye deeper into the pattern, but it also indicates how much liquid you have in, in that area. And I could have been a little bit more generous here, you know, toward the outside edges. I say toward the inside, they're smaller. And so obviously I was able to get enough dye in, but when you got out to the very outside edge, I could have been a little more generous and probably still not had, you know, colors bleed one into another. So that's kind of on me, but it's something that you got to judge for yourself. But still, it doesn't ruin the look of the shirt. I think this pattern came out really nice. I love all the colors around it. I think the turquoise and amethyst around it looks really good. Let me show you the back. We didn't do any pattern there. It's just solid color, but it's nice. Yeah, it just gives you a really colorful back. And so that one came out really nice. Now I was working on another honeycomb at the same time, one for myself. Let me show you how that one came out. Okay, Buster, so this is a shirt that I made for myself. Really the same style. One thing I wanted to try, though, I had seen another tie-dyer do, is put sort of a wigwag here in the center of it. And it came out pretty good. Um, but let me point out a few things, too. So on the first shirt, remember in, earlier in the video I said I had untied it because I didn't think it looked like some of the sinew was tight enough, and I retied it. Well, I had that problem here. You can see right around here in this uh, blue section. I don't have the fine white lines like I do everywhere else. I didn't get the sinew pulled tight enough around here. And so that's something when you're tying this up, you really wanna concentrate on getting everything pulled very tight because if you don't, you're not gonna get, you know, the, the colors may end up blending because the sinew isn't keeping the dye from running one section to another. So, but beyond that, I'm very happy with this. I did do a back to it. I did kind of a, just the chakra back on this one. Came out very nice as well. I'm very happy with this shirt. Like I said, I made this one for myself. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this project. Hope you learned something new. So hey, let's head over to the table and we'll do a sign off. Thanks for watching. All right, Busters, that project came out really cool. Hey, I hope you learned something new on this project. 
Hey, if you really like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming projects. And hey, if you really want to help out my channel, go to my Buy Me A Coffee page and buy me a coffee. That really helps me out. Hey, all right. Thanks for watching. Love you all, folks. Peace out, baby, and go bust out some art.